Hi, I'm Richie Castellano. Welcome to my studio. In my last video, I talked about how I use the Helix with Blue Oyster Cult to do everything, to get every part of my guitar sound. I use it for amps, effects, cabinet simulation, and I'm even using it as a DI to go direct into the PA system. So every part of my guitar tone comes from the Helix, and it's a really great all-in-one unit like that. But that's not all the Helix does. It has a lot of flexibility for interfacing with other pieces of gear. In fact, I think it has the most flexibility I've ever seen in a guitar unit. I mean, you can really do anything you can think of. And today I want to show you a few different examples of how I would use it to uh, interface with traditional guitar rigs. Now here's a traditional guitar rig. This is, you know, guitar, distortion pedal, amp. Pretty straightforward. And I'll show you what I'm using. Uh, this is a Pitbull Super 30 VHT amp. This is a great amp. Uh, it's two channels, but right now we're going to focus on the clean channel because we're using this awesome pedal. This is a JHS Andy Timmons pedal. And for the guitar, we have a Music Man, an Ernie Ball Music Man, Steve Morse Y2D, which is a nice, sweet-sounding, like, medium output guitar. It's very cool. And I'm micing it up with a, you know, straight-up 57. So here's what it sounds like. And now here's with the distortion pedal. So that's it, that's my traditional rig. Now let's bring the Helix in and talk about how we can incorporate that and even enhance this with the Helix. So now we're looking at the back of the Helix. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this Andy Timmons pedal into one of the loops, and that's very easy to do. So I'm going to take send from loop one right there and plug that into the input of the pedal. Done. And then I'm going to take return of loop one right there and plug that into the output of the pedal. So that's done. That's hooked up to the loop. Very easy. I'm going to plug my guitar into guitar in like normal. And I'm going to plug my amplifier into quarter inch out left mono. So that's done, and that was very simple to do. So now my pedal is going through effects loop one of the Helix. My guitar is plugged right into the guitar in, and the left output is going into the front of my amp. But there's one more thing I have to do. I'm going to go to the settings, global settings, and go to the next page here where on ins and outs. And I'm going to change this uh, quarter inch outputs to instrument level because we're using an amp. So let's go back to here, and now when I turn my amp on, I should hear my guitar. Great. Now let's test to see if the loop works. So I'll open up a new block here, go all the way down to send and return, mono, and go to effects loop one, and let's see. And it works. Okay, so let's assign that to one of these bypass switches, which is super easy to do, by the way. Just hold this down. Actually, don't even hold it down. Just touch it and hit OK. And now that's effects loop one. So that's how easy that is. But I want to customize this because I don't want it to say effects loop one. I want it to say what the pedal is. And this is the uh, Andy Timmons, and there's a big at sign on it. So I'm just going to make this an at on the display. So here's how you do that. Just hold this down, hit customize, and I'm going to change this to an at sign. There you go. I'll delete everything else. I'll switch the LED color to uh, go with their color scheme. I'll make this an orange and hit OK. So now, see how it says at and it's an orange? All right, so that's working. So let's build a pedal board around this. So I want to fill up all these slots so I can have this like a traditional pedal board, except uh, where I have my distortion on the first one, I want the helix to supply the rest of the effects. So let's say, I'll do this pretty quickly. Let's say I want a wah. So I'll add a wah. Mono. I like the uh, chrome. And now this is automatically mapped to the expression pedal. So watch this. 
I can click this on. So that's very cool. All right. And now let's add some more effects. Uh, let me put some mod over here after the distortion. So I want to do modulation, mono, uh, script mod phase. All right, and I want to assign this phase to this bypass switch. Just simply touch it, hit OK, done. And now let's add a delay. Simple delay is good. Let's back the time off a little bit. And that'll do. Back the mix off. Let's try that out. Good. And let's add that to this switch. Done. And now let's add a reverb at the end of the chain here. Do a chamber. Nice, and let's assign that to here. And all I'm doing is just lightly placing my finger on this foot switch, and this menu pops up. So let's do it again. And there we go. So now I have a pedal board. Let me save this. Let me turn all these off. So this is my amp, you know, clean. I can kick in my distortion pedal from the loop. Add some water to that. Put some delay on. Maybe do a different kind of sound, a clean sound, with some uh, reverb and, and uh, phaser. Add some wah in. Or some delay. Or put them all on, go nuts. So that's how you can use this just as a pedal board in the front of your amp. So let's see what else we can do with this. Now let's suppose you want to use the distortion from your amp. If you have an amp with a nice distorted sound, you know, you'd want to include that in your rig. So this amp also has a great distortion. This is what it sounds like. Now, some of the effects will still work. For example, wah, if I use that last preset we made. That's fine, and so is the phaser. But then when we get to the delay, Now, you might like that sound, and that's fine if you do, but to my ears, the delay sounds a little too dirty. It sort of mushes things up. And then when we get to the reverb, that gets really messy sounding. So, in this case, what you'd ideally want is to run the effects like the wah and the phaser before the amp, like we're doing now, but keep the effects like delay and reverb going after the amp. And to do that, we use something called the four cable method. And here's how you do it with the Helix. Okay, now we're looking at the back of the Helix again. And I wanna show you what you need to plug into where to get the four cable method to work. Now you'll notice I already have my distortion pedal still plugged in from before, and that's going into loop one. Now normally with other pieces of gear, I need to remove this to make room for the four cable method because that uses the effects loop. But since the Helix has four loops, I can still use my stomp boxes and still do the four cable method, which is awesome. So here's what you need to do. So I'm just gonna leave this alone. That's gonna stay there. Okay, so this is coming from my guitar and that's gonna go into guitar in. So that stays the same, that's normal. Now, we're gonna use loop two. Actually, you know, for the sake of ease, let's use loop three just because it's right over here. Um, 
because loop two is under there and you won't be able to see it. So I want you guys to see what I'm doing. So, okay, this is going into my amp. So that's the send from loop three. So effect send for effect loop three goes into the front of my amp. Now this cable is coming from the effect send on my amp. So my effect send is plugged into this and that's gonna go to the effects return on the helix. Now, this last cable, this goes into, or out from the helix, this is the left mono quarter inch output, and that's gonna go into my amp's effects return. So that's it. Now depending on how your amp works, you might need to change some settings or play with the levels. I know that I have to change this back to line level for my effects loop, so I'm gonna go back here to the global settings, page over to quarter inch outputs and change it back to line. So if everything is hooked up properly, I should get some signal. Good. And let's check all the effects. So everything's working, but now check this out. It's like I'm on my drive channel right now, and that sounds clean to me. That's because what we're hearing is my guitar pretty much going straight into the power amp section of my amp through the effects loop. We don't want that. We obviously want to put the um, preamp of the amp back into the chain. Now here's how you do that. Let's go to a new block here. And now, before I said the preamp of my amp was in effects loop three. So I'm gonna go down to effects loop three, add that. <laughs> Now we have this block here and I'm gonna hit the action button and I'm gonna move this exactly where I want it, which is in between my wah and uh, my modulation effect there. And after it is going to come the delay and the reverb. So let's hear how that sounds. So here it is dry. So let's see if my wah is going before that. Yes, it is. And the phaser. So here's a test. Let's see if the delay still sounds all dirty like it did before. Nope, it sounds really clean. And that's because the delay in the four cable method is going after my preamp. Let's try the reverb now. So it was that easy and anything I want to go in front of the amp just goes before this block and any sort of time based or spatial effects I want to go after the amp go here. Now another awesome thing we can do with this is we can bypass the amp. Now you might be asking why would we want to bypass the amp? Well here's why. Let's say for example there's a preamp in here that I really like. So I'll add a new block. Let's go to preamp, guitar, and let's uh, pick something cool. Let's pick the PV Panama. So this is a good example if you have sort of like a Fender style amp that doesn't have like an over the top gain and you wanna get that sort of metal-y sound out of it, you can do that now. So let's move this. So at the action button, I'll move this to where this was. So now, I might need to play with the volume a little bit. And I can play with the EQs and I can make it match. But what I've essentially done is now I'm just using this amp as a power amp and I can use modeled preamps from the Helix. So that gives me a lot of flexibility from the four cable method. I can, like I said before, just use it just as stomp boxes, or stomp box models in the front of the amp and like rack or space or time based effects in the back of the amp, or I can just bypass this preamp altogether and use a variety of models in here of modeled preamps. So really the flexibility for this is pretty endless, but we're gonna take it a step further now. Now let's say you wanna add stereo to your rig. 
You want to keep the same tone from your amp, from your main amp, but you want stereo delays, you want wide reverbs, wide choruses. Well, it's very easy to do that in the Helix, but all you'll need extra is another amp. Now, it's preferable to have two of the same amp, but like a lot of people, I don't have two of the same amp. So I'm using a different 12-inch combo here. Um, now, they're going to sound different, so there's ways that we can get around that in the Helix, but first, let's set it up. On the back of the Helix, all we need to do is plug this second amp into the right output, and that's gonna go into the effects return of the second amp. All right, now everything's set up. I have 50 seconds on both of these, panned hard left and hard right, and here's what I have. All right, I can hear right off the bat that this amp is considerably louder than this amp. Now, this amp doesn't have an effects loop volume control on the back, so I really can't lower this. I could raise this one, but I kinda don't wanna do that. But thankfully, the Helix has just the tool that I need for this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this simple delay to a ping pong delay so I can really hear the stereo back and forth effect. So I'm just going to go over here, back out one level, go down to stereo, and pick ping pong. Here we go, and let's hit it. So now I can hear them going back and forth. All right, now I'm going to go over after all my effects, and I'm going to add an EQ, and I'll show you why I'm going to do that in a second and I'm gonna pick a mono parametric EQ because I like parametric EQs. So now I'm gonna hit the action button, go down a level, and as you can see, it opened up a new path. Now there's a couple things I wanna check first. That's a split Y, perfect. And here we have the merge mixer. Now the merge mixer is what we're gonna to use to balance the levels of my two speakers. So first thing I wanna do is make sure they're panned correctly. So A is gonna be panned all the way to the left, B is gonna be panned all the way to the right. Okay. So I need this one to come down considerably, and this is my right speaker. So we'll go to B and start lowering this. All right, that sounds pretty good to me. So now they're balanced in level. But they're not really balanced in tone, and that's the problem when you have two different amps. But now that equalizer I added there, I can use that to take some bottom off this, because I can hear this has some more low end than this. So I'll go down to this EQ. I'm not going to go nuts. I'm just going to put a little low cut on for now. So put it like there. See what that sounds like. Pretty good. Now I can go nuts matching these and going back and forth, but I'm not gonna do that right now. That's if, if you're doing this at home and you wanna use this sort of setup, you can go crazy matching the EQs, go ahead. But I'm just gonna try to move through this a little quickly. So let me save this for now. All right, so let's hear the stereo effect. Uh, I'm gonna take my mod over here, I'm gonna move this after the amp. And I wanna change this to some stereo so we can really hear the nice stereo effects. Let's go to stereo and let's do Trinity Chorus. That's a nice one. So let's take a listen. Let's hear the chamber in stereo. Now remember, we're not using any modeling right now. We're still using the preamp from this amp with this setup. So this is still a four cable method, but it's actually like a five cable setup now because we're in stereo. So listen, if I put the distortion on here. So now I hear my distortion in stereo. The tone isn't coming from this amp. We're just using this as a power amp, strictly. The tone's all coming from here. And we can get our cool stereo effects, you know. Yeah, 
Yeah, so like I said, still the tone from here, just using this for widening effects. This preamp is running both amps right now using the four cable setup with the Helix. And the left and right is very easy to do, and all you have to do is balance your levels and balance your tones. Uh, now that would be enough for this video, but I'm going to add one more crazy epic thing. Okay, I got a lot of gear here now. What we're going to try to do is a wet, dry, wet rig. That's very popular among touring guitarists who bring mega rigs with them. Uh, and usually you need racks and racks of gear to do this, but the Helix makes it possible with a lot less gear. Uh, but you will need a few things. You'll need two speaker cabinets to flank your amp. I'm sitting on the amp right now because I'm sort of out of room, so there's the amp under me. And um, again, it's preferable to have matching speaker cabinets. I don't, we'll be all right. I'll match them as best as I can with the volume. Uh, you'll also need a stereo power amp. Uh, if you don't have that, you can also just use two additional amplifiers and go into the returns of those, but it's really better to have a stereo power amp. So here I have a VHT, an old VHT 252. I have a VHT 212 cabinet with the eminent speakers in here, and I have a Marshall 212 with Celestians. And they're both mic'd up at 57s, pan hard left and hard right. So the idea with a wet dry wet rig is that your main tone comes through the center speaker, and that's like your amp and that's dry, no effects. The only effects you put in there are the effects that go before the amp distortion, like, you know, wah, or, um, you know, or an extra distortion pedal or a compression, things like that. Uh, all of your time-based effects, your delays, choruses, reverbs, they're going to come out of the sides and they're going to be hard panned. So this way you always have that like super focused, clean sound in the middle and all of your effects are on the side and you get this whole, you know, illusion of space, which is really awesome. So let me show you how to patch that. So now we're looking at the back of the Helix again and I'm going to show you how I patch a wet, dry, wet rig. There might be better ways to do this and you might have discovered something easier. And if you have, please let me know because I've been tinkering with this for a while and this is the best way I could figure out how to do this. So you start off by patching it like a regular four cable setup. So this comes from the guitar, goes into there. We're gonna use, oh, I, I already have my distortion pedal patched in loop one, so I'm just gonna leave it there because, you know, I like having that in the chain. So. Send, effect send two on the Helix, that's gonna go to the input of my amp. So boom, and there you go. This comes from the effect send on my amp, that's gonna go to effects return on the Helix. So the effects loop send from the amp comes back to the return on the Helix. Now, this left mono output, that's going to the effects return on the amp. So there's your four cable setup. Now, here's where it gets a little funky. In order to make the wet, dry, wet happen, I had to do a little jumping. So I'm taking the right output and I'm gonna jump it back to the aux in here. So let me say that again. I'm taking the right output and jumping it into the aux in on the Helix. Now that might sound really wacky, but I'm gonna explain why we had to do that later. And it actually works very well. Okay, now all that's left to do are our power amp returns and this is you know the inputs to the wet amps on either side the flanking amps that just have the 100% effects so for that we're just going to do the sends and we're going to do the remaining two loops we're going to use those so let's say that send 3 will be left effects and send 4 will be right effects so now we're all patched let me just go through it really quickly again because i know this is very complicated now guitar in this is my stomp box, so you can ignore that for now. The send, effects send to, in this example, goes to the amplifier in. Effects return to comes from the amplifier send. Left out goes to amplifier return. Right out goes to aux in, back into the helix. Effects sends three and four go to stereo power amps left and right. So that's this setup. Now let's uh, take a look and a listen. Okay, now we're all patched and ready to go. You're gonna turn your amp on, you're gonna hear a weird sound. Okay, that's no good obviously, but there's a reason for that and we're gonna fix it. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna set our inputs. 
And normally I have the inputs on multi and that's how they default. But right now I'm just gonna want guitar. So right away, put it in on guitar, I should get rid of that awful sound. So no problem, we're already off to a better start. Down here on this input where it says none, we're gonna set this input to aux. So that's good, okay. Now, let's go over to this top output, which is also set to multi. We don't want that multi anymore. We want this just to be quarter inch. Okay. And this output down here, this is not gonna be multi anymore either. This is going to be send three and four. So that should get rid of that weird phasey sound, which is exactly what it was. So now all the routing is done correctly. Uh, remember, you might have to go back to the global settings and set the outputs right, depending on what amps you have or you know your effects loops, but I'm gonna leave it like this for now. Does it work fine? So all of my inputs and outputs are set correctly now. So now I can start playing around. All right. First, I'm gonna put my wah in. Let's do this as quickly as possible. And I'll do the chrome. Done, great. Next, I'm gonna put my distortion pedal in. And that's easy enough to do. That's send and return. And I know that's in effects loop one. So there you go, that's routed. Um, now let's assign that to here, just by touching it. Okay, so that's assigned. And why don't we name it? Because it's fun and cool to do. And it's really easy because the name of this pedal is an at sign, the Andy Timmons pedal. So it takes me a second to do it. Switch the color to orange just to stay with the line six coloring conventions. And that's good to go. Okay, so we're all set up here. Now, we're going to add another effects loop. This is where we're going to add the amp, the uh, effects loop for my guitar amp which is two. So now I should be all patched. A little loud. Okay, but we're good to go. Right now we have our regular four cable set up. It's all routed. Everything's fine. Now we're gonna go down here. And this is coming from the aux. So before I said I was gonna explain why we had to jump the right output into the aux input, and that's really important to understand. Basically, we're only using mono effects on this top line, and these are the effects that are gonna go before the amp. So all these, because they're mono, they're coming out both left and right outputs, so they're summed. Very important, do not put any stereo stuff here. It has to be mono. So now that we're routing, both, now left is going to the guitar amp, so that's taking care of that. Right, since it's a duplicate of the same tone, is going to the aux input. And now this brings our guitar sound to this line, which is gonna only be the effects that are going to go into the left and right stereo effect speakers. So all these are gonna be stereo, and this has basically the right side, which is a duplicate of this side, and this will go out to those outputs, the um, send, three and four outputs. This is where we're going to be putting our uh, time-based effects. So now I'm gonna put a chorus here. Make sure it's stereo. All these have to be stereo. Now let's do the Trinity chorus. And another important thing, you really want to put the mix at 100%. So that's really awesome, and I'll assign that to here. Good. Okay. Another thing I wanna do is I'm gonna assign a controller to this right now, and I'll show you why. Control assign. And I'm not gonna do mix like I would normally do, I'm gonna do level. And the controller is gonna be expression two. And the minimum value is gonna be off, and the max value is gonna be zero. Okay, so that's good. That's done. All right, 
Next one I want to do is we're going to do a ping pong delay so we can really hear the stereo effect. Ping pong. Again, mix 100%. Might make the time a little less. Let's try that. So I don't know if you can hear it right now, but I have my dry signal coming through the center amp and it's bouncing back and forth between these two side amps. It sounds awesome. And another thing I'm going to do is, let me assign this here. Okay, save that. And I'm also going to do a controller assign, same one. I'll show you why in a second, but again, we don't want mix, we want level. Also going to go to the expression pedal. It's going to go from as low as it can go to zero. Good. Okay, so that's done. Now here's why I'm doing that. Because now... So now I can actually blend in the side speakers. Now what you might want to do with these time-based effects is you might want to drop them on their own path. And the reason is because the chorus is getting delayed and you don't hear the chorus right away and that's kind of a drag. So what we're going to do is hit the action button, push it down one, and now you have parallel paths going. So now you hear the chorus kicking right away. And let's add a reverb. Make the mix nice and high. Now here I might not go 100%. And we'll leave that. I'll save it. So, let's kick in, let me assign this to this switch. Great, so there's my whole wet, dry, wet rig all set up and good to go. just sounds monstrous. It's awesome. It's so wide. And um, that's really, it's a really cool thing that you can do that with this unit. Let's try one more crazy thing and let's see if we can even do it. I'm sort of doing this off the top of my head right now. Um, I want to add a harmony. So let's get rid of this reverb block for now. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to have a harmony only go through the sides. Yeah, let's try that. So let's do like a G major guitar harmony. And let's put it, let's put it here. Let's move this over one. Good, and I'm going to put this here. So let's go to pitch, stereo, twin harmony, good. Okay, let's go to key. Let's go to G major. Major scale. Uh, the, let's do down a third. Let's do mix 100%. Pan left. And now we'll go second harmony. G. Major. We'll go up a third. Pan right. Okay, let's check this out. I'll 
I'll take the uh, ping pong off so you can hear it a little better. So what's happening now is I have each note in each speaker. So instead of sounding like a mushy guitar harmony all going through my main amp, I have it separated through each of the speakers. So that's a really cool thing you can do with the wet dry wet is take your sound and you know move it around in the space. It's really cool. Now, not everybody has extra cabinets and a power amp. So if you don't have that, you can still do wet dry wet. Say you have a pair of full range full res uh, flat response speakers like the Stage Source L2 or even like, you know, QSCs or whatever PA speakers you have, you can still do this. And the way you would do that is instead of sending it to amps, you would just send it to cabinet simulators out into your uh, your speakers. And you can also do this while you're recording. You can do it if you use like in-ear monitors with a PA system. So you could still get the wet, dry, wet effect even if you don't have all the gear. So you, remember that. You can just get this with just your main guitar amp and going through a PA system or your recording speakers. So you could still do this. So I hope you like this video. Please leave comments and uh, let me know what you think. And if you find more interesting or cooler ways to do this stuff, please let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm Richie Castellano, and I'll see you next time.